Dr. Muziwake Anthony Lembede, that great philosopher and awakener of the African youth of his generation, has written, one who wants to create a future must not forget the past. An African proverb itself has long said, when you fall, do not look where you fell, look where you slipped. Many people, with regard to this country, preach the gospel of forget the past, but where their issues are involved, they not only remember the past, but they commemorate it. In July 2014, I watched, I watched on television rather painfully when all European leaders met to commemorate the 100th anniversary of what they call uh, the First World War. I did not see any African leaders invited to this commemoration. This is despite that in South Africa alone, 83,000 Africans were reportedly recruited for this European war. This was a very high number, which is when it is considered that the African population was not what it is today. Here in South Africa, on one occasion alone, we lost 600 soldiers. This was on the fifth. This was the fifth battalion. They died when the SS Mendy ship sank on 21 February 1917. This was after it collided with the SS Darrow ship behind the front lines in France. I think the practice of dealing with symptoms in a national liberation struggle and taking them for the disease itself will destroy Africans in this country. Effects of a problem must not be confused with the cause from where they come. Causes of a problem must be identified and correct thinking applied to the problem. For instance, nobody in this country and in the world heard of the word apartheid until colonial prime minister Daniel F. Malan uh, coined this word in 1948. This word meant racism. Racism, however, was there in Kenya, in Rhodesia, in Yasaland, Congo, and other African countries that were colonized. Fundamentally, the problem of South Africa was never apartheid or racial discrimination. In this country, we got involved in a colonial situation when our land was taken from us through the Berlin General Conference in 1885. That conference was critical for European colonization of Africa and looting the riches of the people of this country and of Africa continentally. It has been our custom to go to a country, and because we were stronger militarily, take and retain their possession of the country to which we had not lain. Another colonial settler who the British government 
had honored as Sir Andre Stockenstrom made the position of the colonialist in the African country as clear as daylight. He declared, the question of robbing Africans of their land is not whether it is right or wrong to plunder, massacre, and exterminate the Hottentots, the Kafirs. The simple reason is, will it pay? If the Bible and the missionary stand in the way of this thousand percent return, if in short they cannot promote the great work of converting a nation of shopkeepers into a nation of millionaires, gunpowder will produce a more efficient gospel for the purpose of our system of civilization. Close quote. It is important to note that these two men had been honored by the British government as says. Indeed, for Africans in this country, Colonialism reached a dilapidated level of idolatry. Its practitioners created a false myth of supremacy through which they turned themselves into demigods to be worshipped. South Africa is the only country that Britain that Britain colonized, but never returned to its colonized owners. The other 15, the other 15 countries, the other 15 countries which Britain colonized achieved independence dating from Ghana, on 6 March 1957 to Zimbabwe, South Central Rhodesia then, on the 18th of April, 1980. In South Africa, Britain seized this country by force of arms. It later handed it to its colonial settlers on the 20th of September, 1909. They are the people that now became negotiators yeah. with the Africans in Cordesa in 1993. That is why on the land question in South Africa, the issue of African land dispossession was wrongly handled in the present constitution. South Africa was never a state in international law. Article 4 of the Union of South Africa Act 1909 clearly states, and I quote, the Union shall have full power and authority within the limits of the colonies. Article 6 provides that, and I quote, the colonies mentioned in Section 4 shall become original provinces of the Cape of Good Hope, Natal, Transvaal, and Orange Free State, as the case may be. The original provinces shall have the same limits as the perspective as the respective colonies at the establishment of the Union. The legal language is very clear. There is no national sovereignty created here or decolonization of the, of the colonized Africans. It must not be forgotten also that South Africa illegally declared itself a republic. It must not be forgotten that also that South Africa illegally declared itself a republic after it was heavily 
criticized and boycotted by the whole world for the Shaville massacre. This had resulted from the uprising led by the Pan-Africanist Congress on the 21st of March, 1960. This republic was illegally declared on the 31st of May, 1961, by rebels such as Hendrik Fervoort. Britain never suppressed this unilateral declaration of independence, which was in law a coup d'etat, just as it did not suppress the Ian Smith Rebellion in Rhodesia, now Zimbabwe, on the 11th of November, 1965. This absence of decolonization in this country by Britain consolidated colonialism through which the African country was expropriated by European colonizers. That is why the policy that must now be implemented on the land question is repossession. It is return. It is a repossession, return, or restoration of land to its rightful owners according to population numbers, which include the Europeans who consider themselves Africans. Yes. African magnanimity, Ubuntu, Butu, demands this. Africans have never driven any human beings to the sea until they drove themselves there. It is European colonial settlers who expropriated African land from Africans. All that must be done now is justice. It is not surprising that G featured who was a member of the colonial parliament in South Africa in 1910, is on record as telling his colonial colleagues, and I quote, if we are to deal with the natives, that is Africans, in this country, then according to population numbers, we should give them four fifths of the land. <laughs>